Now, this is the Admire that I mounted about a year or so ago. It's the it's what I want to do with the Semchon. I end up with something so that when I turn it on, it backlights very nicely. It's pretty spectacular once it's done. I have a little label in it that tells you what it is. And the black matting helps to kind of make it stand out a lot. So this is what we're going for. Today I'm starting the process of building up a backlit frame for a palisade I purchased a week or two ago. This guy right here. Um, so I've used this kind of a frame before. What this requires is a deep frame with straight insides. So I've already taken this apart. So some of this is already disassembled. Let's see if I can. So this is the back of it. This is the back of the old frame which i'm going to use to put the leds on because it's nice and thick and and then these are some spacers i'll probably end up using Put these out of here and then there's a couple panes of glass which i'm not sure i'm going to use at all whoops um they're just regular i guess about 10 by 10. um i may or may not use those but this i will use this is a nice little frame piece and another piece of glass so this is the frame that I want to start with so as you can see it's got a straight inside along here it's about an inch and a quarter deep or so maybe an inch and an eighth um, but it's straight that's important and it's deep I have a lot of layers I have to put on this thing of course there's always the, the front if I use the glass Yes, but probably not. I tried that before on the admire, and every time I take a picture, it glares. So I'm going to try it without the glass this time. Um, but beyond that is the actual mat that holds the piece. And there's a slight smaller piece with a hole in it where the light shines through that backs the matting. Uh, gives a little thickness. Um, then there's the LEDs. And, of course, there's a back that holds everything together. So... I'll slowly be doing this. Uh, the next step is to actually cut out the, the mat for the inside that will actually hold the piece and then just build up piece by piece. So I will be doing this and I'll edit this all together in hopefully a coherent manner so we can see what, what's going on. The next step of the process is I went up to Michael's and I found this leftover matting from the frame, frame section. Um, I'm going to cut this down to be the same size as the backing on the frame. So as you can see, it's slightly larger. So that should work just fine. I'm going to cut two of these. Uh, the first one is going to be a holder for the, for the slice itself, the exact same size cut out. And the second one's going to be an eighth of an inch smaller around the circumference. So it kind of backs up into that. Uh, so I'm going to cut them this afternoon and I have to cut the holes. Okay, so I've cut the two pieces. Here's the original backing. So you can put that in there. And then I have the two mat pieces. They'll fit very nicely into the frame. And let it up with something that looks like that. Although it may take that white out of there. It kind of distracts. We'll see. But next step is complete. Now I have to draw, cut a hole in the middle here to display the piece. I've completed the next step. I've cut the profile of the slice into each of the mat pieces. Um, if you notice, one thing is important here. If you look at this one, this is fits the piece almost perfectly, but there's a little bit of play in there. And that means that there's a gap, which means light's going to get through from the LEDs. So what I did is I created a slightly smaller piece you can see that step inside there. It's about an eighth of an inch shoulder. The slice fits in there perfectly, and it's got a little, little backing, so it's isolated from the LED, so it won't have any contact. But also what it does is it makes a perfect seal around the edge so no light gets through. That's important because it gives the, the final uh, project a good finish look. You don't want light coming through. Uh, that's kind of distracting. You want the light to come through the crystals. One little detail I forgot to point out was that when you cut the pattern into the cardboard, because the front is black 
and the back is a white, you get a white shoulder down here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a Sharpie, a black Sharpie, and just basically coloring it in because what happens is you end up seeing some of that white shining through, even though it's, you're very careful to seal it. There's always something coming through. So this really helps to make it a little more presentable. Okay, so what I've done with my two pieces is for convenience, I've got some double-sided sticky tape and I glue them together just to make it one piece. And a little bit further, because I tend to overbuild things and being an engineer, I bought some Lexan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to back up the piece. It's going to fit right on top. And that will give it a, a lot of strength so you don't have any welding. And to connect the, the piece to the hole, here it really gets a little crazy. I don't know if you can see this. I'm using stainless hardware. What I have here is a, a number eight screw stainless. I like to use these cap heads. They've got nice, pretty little ends on them. And I have a little plastic ferrule that goes through, screw goes into that. This goes into a hole through the plastic. This actually is the part that makes contact with the palisite. I don't want any damage to the palisite. Then on the other side, I have a little plastic washer. It goes there. Of course, I've been overbuilt. I got a little stainless number eight wa uh, metal washer, and of course, a little nut. And these will all secure the three pieces together. With all the pieces put together, this is the final result. The palisite slice is in the matting. All the hardware is in place. It's now all one piece. On to the lighting. The next step is to take that backing piece. I'm going to use this to mount the LEDs. So the LEDs come, I bought these from Amazon. They come in a roll and there's a strip like this and there's a whole bunch of LEDs. Each one of those yellow spots in there if you can see it. I'm going to lay down maybe four or five of these that's self-adhesive. They run up 12 volts. Uh, so one, I'll have a common bus for 12 volts and a common for ground, and I'll just solder the wires to it. All right, so I've completed the next step. As you can see, I've put on four strips of LEDs. I put an electrical bus here. This is the 12 volts to the ground, and I'm going to run a little wire from the 12 volt in each side over here, and then a ground from each side. And I left a little pigtail right here so that I can hook this up to some sort of connector or switch as I see fit. So on to the soldering. Right. Moving right along, as you can see, I've hooked up the power to each of the LEDs. Big question now is, does it work? So let's find out. A little battery pack that I ginned up here, it's nine volts. And take my two wires, and let's see what happens. The big reveal. Hey, look at that. We have light. Okay, that's going to be the backlight to my frame. So as a pre-assembly fit check, I've taken those white pieces, and I painted them black, and I've hot glued them into the interior of the frame, a little spacer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the piece. I'm going to insert it. See how we go. Yeah, it's a little tight. There we go. So that's in there. Now I've got this piece, which I'm going to just lay in there as a spacer. That can be seen. And of course the lights. And let's see what everything looks like. It's not backlit yet. I don't have it hooked it up electrically. But voila. Looking pretty good. So it's based back about Oh, three eighths of an inch inside the frame to give it a little standoff. It's come along pretty nice. Next step is to hook up electrically and get it lit. Okay, I have hooked up the electrical connections. They have a connector going into some solid core bus wire that goes to both of the buses, plus and minus, which should work. It's also right here, string relieved, so I don't have any wiggle on that wire because. These wires inside are very small and, you know, 
accumulated movement could cause fatigue in the wire. So let's see what happens. I'm going to put this into the frame. This rock is in there. And I'll cut a groove right here for the wire. I'm done here. But if I hook up the electrical, I have a little 12 volt power supply that I got from an old computer. And there it is. We now have a backlit frame. Pretty nice. In building a couple of these frames, I found that the LEDs can sometimes be a little bit too bright if the crystals are kind of clear. This one, they happen to be a little clear, and you can see the LEDs. So what I'm trying to do is take a little white piece of paper and put it in there between the LEDs and the piece. Normally, I get frosted leg stamp. I couldn't find any, so this is kind of fills the bill. Let's see what happens. Connector, you're in, and it's just as bright, but you can't see the LEDs, and the, the white paper acts as a light diffuser. So I think I'm going to leave that in there. It seems to work pretty well. Okay, so the frame is complete. Uh, so just to give you an idea of the finishing touches, it didn't take long. I put a little groove right here, so the wire has a nice gentle exit out of the frame. I've put on four retainers to keep the back in place. That was about it. So the thing is finished, and I got a pretty nice frame out of the deal. This has been quite a process. It's kind of fun uh, to build something like this to see the end results. So I hope you've all have enjoyed these past 10 or 11 minutes, and if you want to try it yourself, you can always email me at rmetches at dslextreme.com or go through Topher Spinato's group. Um, be happy to answer any questions. Bye.